In this video, we're going to talk about indexing arrays with linear indices. So what are linear indices? So when we talked about arrays, we kind of just said that they were multidimensional vectors. Um, however, arrays, the way that they're stored in memory is as vectors. So if I have an array that's, let's say, 3, 5, 7, 9, 8, and four, like that, there's no way that I can save this uh, array in memory as a three by two entity. Instead, the way that this is saved in MATLAB and the way that this is saved in memory as, is as one long vertical vector. So in memory, what this looks like is three, five, seven, nine, eight, four. However, behind the scenes, MATLAB is doing some conversions in order to make it appear to be two-dimensional. And so because of this, since it's saved like a vertical vector, these indices have, or these, these elements have what we call linear indices. And notice how when I translated this array to this vector, I kind of went down the columns. I went down the columns and then across the rows. And that's the same thing that happens with linear indices. So for this array, this three is located at index one. This five is at two, this seven is at three, four, five, six. And that's what matches this vector that's created in MATLAB. So when we're using linear indices, it's important to note that they go down the rows and then across the columns. So the syntax for using linear indices to index arrays is exactly the same syntax as what we talked about when indexing vectors. So if I had an array, 5, 4, 9, 8, 10, 7, so if I had this array and I wanted to index just the, let's say, four, in order to do that, I could do something like A, and let's say this is saved inside of a variable R. So A, in this case, would be my array, and I give parentheses, and then I just tell it the linear index that I want to access. And in this case, the four is at the second linear indice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So all I have to do is say that. And so remember when we talked about the keyword end with indexing vectors, that still applies here as well. So if I were to do something like B is equal to the array of end, this is saying the last element in my array using linear indices. So this translates to the number of elements inside of my array. In this case, that's six. So therefore, this is equivalent to me saying array at six, which gives me back the value seven. So I can also access multiple values or elements using multiple linear indices. And I can do that by providing a list or a vector of linear indices. So what I mean by that is, let's say I had an array that was 6, 3, 4, 5, 10, 8. And I wanted to access the 6, the 4, and the 10, and save it inside of some variable. I can do that by creating a list of linear indices. So that six is at the first index, the four is at the third index, and the 10 is at the fifth index. And so I can just write a line of code like that. And what I would get back is the vector six, four, and 10. So it's important to note here that the same way we talked about indexing multiple elements in a vector uh, using the direct entry method, I can also do this with the colon operator. I just have to have some way of producing this vector. So I can do that. I can do the same line of code by saying I want to start at one, go in steps of two, and I want to end at the fifth one. Those are equivalent. And what also holds true with indexing vectors is the keyword end. So we talked about end being equal to the length of a vector or the number of elements in a vector. And that's the same thing that applies uh, with 
with arrays and linear indices. So in this case here, if I want to use the keyword end, that's going to correspond to the number of values in my array. So in this case here, the number of values in my array is six. So I can use end to do the same exact thing. I can say start at two or start at one, go in steps of two and go to the end. Because end in this case corresponds to six and one colon two colon six is the same thing as one colon two colon five. They both produce back to vector one, three, five. And so we've been talking about, we've been talking about just accessing things and we can also use linear indices to modify things inside of our array. So let's say for instance, I wanted to change the, the first three numbers to the number zero. Okay. I can do that by saying my array at the first three numbers, I want to assign a zero. So the same principle applies here where whatever I'm putting in to my array has to match the number of spots I have or whatever I'm putting in has to be length one. So in this case, I'm putting one thing into three spots, which is okay. If I try to put four things into three spots or two things into three spots, that would be an error. So some of the times when we talk about arrays, we want to change the array from a two dimensional entity to a one dimensional. So instead of having multiple rows and multiple columns, I either just want to have one row, and multiple columns, or multiple rows and only one column. So we call this linearization or linearizing the array. And so what that means is I want to have all of the elements from my array, but in their linear order to look like the linear vector that they are or that the way they're saved in memory. So if I had the array three, four, nine, 10, eight, and five, and I said I wanted to linearize this array, I would want, I would want to create a vector that is just all of my elements, but in linear order. So I would want it to be like this. And so in terms of indexing, I want to index all of my elements using linear indices. So I can do this by saying, so let's say, let's call this line for linear. Uh, I can have my array and I want to start at the first one and go all the way to the last one. So I can just say colon end. And in this case here, I'll get a linearized vector of my array. And now, so once again, computer scientists are notoriously lazy and typing this out is, is, is painful, right? Essentially, I'm saying I want all of my elements. So there's actually a shorthand for this as well. So instead of typing one to end, what I can actually do is I can just say a colon. And so, the colon, so the colon is the same thing as saying one to end. And so this also works for vectors. We didn't talk about it with vectors in the other videos, but I could also do that. Um, however, it would be kind of redundant in that sense. If you just wanted all of them, you would just have the same vector. But the colon is just shorthand for saying one to the end. So deleting parts of arrays with linear indices is very similar to deleting parts of vectors. So let's say I had uh, an array that was six, seven, eight, ten, four, nine. And let's say I wanted to delete that eight. So remember, deleting is the same thing as assigning an empty vector to a certain spot or certain spots. So all I would have to do is say array, and then my eight is in the third spot or the third linear index is equal to empty brackets. So it's important to note here that since I'm deleting that, that entity there, I would kind of have a hole, an empty space, and I can't have uh, Tetris looking like shapes, right? So MATLAB, when you're deleting stuff in arrays, it's going to give you back the array as a vector. So in this case here, after my, after this line of code is executed, my array is no longer a two dimensional entity. It's going to be six, seven, 10. Oh yeah, that was a 10, not a 16, 10, six, seven, 10, four, and nine. It's just that the eight is not there anymore. And so I can delete multiple spots as well. So I can, so let's say I had 
my original array again and I said something like array from one to two to end is equal to empty brackets. So I want to delete every other number. So in this case here, I would want to delete the six, the eight, and the four. So all I'm left with is the seven, 10, and nine. So therefore my array at the end of this would be seven, 10, and nine. So these are just two separate examples here. And so deleting is very similar uh, as deleting with vectors. All right, so let's go over this example. So we wanted to create a vector that was two, five, and nine by indexing this array using linear indices. So our first step here is to first write out what this array looks like. So our first row here is nine, four, three. Our second row is 10, 8, 7. Our third row is 1, 2, 3. And our last row is 6, 7, and 5. So we want to access the, the 2, the 5, and the 9 in that order. So remember, oh, I didn't close off my right. So remember, we want to do with these with linear indices. So let's list out all the linear indices here. So this is the first, this is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So if I wanted to create this vector, I'm going to need to index my array. And so I want the two first. So the two is located in the seventh position. So seven. Then I want the five. The five is located at the 12th position and the nine. And so the nine is located at the first position. And so once again, just to reiterate, I can use end here in order to substitute for the last element or the last index. So I can also say seven and and one. Both will give me the desired vector. 